Welcome back to PHP 101. In this video, we're going to get into four and four each loops. All right, so let's start with a for loop. So to create a for loop, you'd start off with the word for like this. And then you have uh, inside your parentheses here, you have three things that you specify. You specify an initial value, you specify a condition, and then you specify some sort of increment. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll set this variable, we'll create a variable called i and we'll set it equal to one. Okay, so that's our initial value of our variable i. And our variable i is what we're gonna use throughout the rest of our for loop um, to do our checks and display our data and so forth. So we're gonna set an initial value to one and then we're gonna specify a condition. So this is a condition that's gonna tell the for each loop you know, whether or not uh, it, it should really kind of continue processing uh, whether or not it should s display what we're going to put inside of our curly bracket. So um, in this case, we're going to set i less than or equal to 10. So it, as long as i is less than or equal to 10, we're going to continue running our loop. Okay. And then we're going to specify an increment and we're going to set that to i plus plus. What this, so what this is going to do is our initial value will be 1. So the for loop is going to check uh, if that is less than or equal to 10, and it is. And so if so, then it's going to do whatever we put inside our curly brackets here. And then it's going to increment this i by 1. So it'll change it to a 2. And then it'll run the loop again. And then a 3, and run the loop again. A 4, run the loop again. And so it'll keep running this loop until it meets this condition or till this condition is no longer true. So if we come here and we just do something simple like echo um, and we'll do I and a break like this. If we do something simple like that and we refresh this, then you'll see we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once it reaches 10, then it stops. So this is a really handy way if you need to like create a, if you need to create a number list like this, or you need to create some sort of data and you don't want to write it all out by hand, then you can do this. For example, I use this a lot with, um, you know, when best when creating an interface and you want to have different text sizes that someone can select. So they could select a six point font or an eight point or 10 point or 12 point or whatever. This is an easy way to create that option inside of that select select box without actually having to type out <laughs> all of the the different numbers there. Now a couple things here. One, you want to be careful with your conditions here because sometimes it's easy to set a condition that will either that will kind of always be true. And so then you your your loop will just keep running and running and running and running. Um, the other thing is if you want to do different increments here, you can certainly do that. So you can do i equals and you can do i plus two. And that's going to give us a little bit different increment. So if we take a look at that, then you get one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay, so you can do you can do five if you wanted to here. Um you can do whatever increment you want that that makes sense. You can also change this. So this could be zero instead of one, or it could be any other number. It could be like eight, uh, whatever the case may be. So there's some manipulation you can do here um, with this. So keep that in mind. Um, and it's just a handy tool for kind of creating data that you might need. Now, the counter to that then, or the, the sister brother of that is what's called the for each loop. So for each is like this parentheses, just like above, and then our curly Q brackets. The difference is, is we're actually going to be referencing something and, and, and really where we're gonna be referencing is elements in an array. So if we create a, an array real quick here, and let's just do array equals name, equals array function and then say name email address something like this okay now we can actually loop through our array and do different stuff with the data so what we're going to do is we're going to spec we're going to reference our array so for each parentheses and then array and then you were use the word as and you can do this a couple of different ways. So uh, you can do in a name name like um, data like this, 
right? And then when inside here, when referencing the elements, you could do, let's just do this echo, and then we could do data, and I'll do a break like this. Okay, so whatever, uh, let's go ahead and show this. So as it loops through the array, the value is what's gonna what's gonna go here, right? So the value of the the element is name. The second one is email, and the second one or the third one is address. So it outputs name, email, address, right? So you can do that, or you can do like this. And what this is gonna do is now you can reference both the key and the value. So let's actually change this to value so that it makes a little more sense. And now we could do something like key and use our, our key variable here and then data like this. Or actually let's change that to value since we changed that above. And so if we look at this, then you see we get key zero is name, key one, email, key two, address. And that's because now we have access to both the key and the value from our array. And of course this was an indexed array, right? So if I just print R this array so you can see it. You can see our name, email, address, right? So 012, key 12, or 012. Okay, so you can reference both the key and the value. And that's what for each loops allow you to do is loop through arrays and output different data. So you may this may be an HTML table that you're creating, or it may be a definition list, it may be a, a paragraph tags. Whatever you wanna create here, whatever you wanna loop through and create, you can do that with the for each loop. It could be an unordered list. So lots of different things that you can use this for. Oftentimes, again, it's used mostly in conjunction with database data. So you grab something from the database, you get it back in an array, and now you wanna loop through that array and you wanna display it in a table or a definition list or an unordered list or whatever. All right, so that is using for and for each loops.